atmosphere. On June 10th, the team will fly aboard NASA's DC-8 Airborne Laboratory, packed with cameras and other imaging instruments, to capture the high-speed reentry over an unpopulated area of Central Australia. The Japanese spacecraft has been on a seven-year journey to return a sample of the asteroid Itokawa. The airborne observation approach is, is used because it allows us to see the spacecraft as it enters above the clouds, above weather, above any obstructions that would make it difficult for us to observe the re-entry. And it, the entry occurs, the luminous period of the entry occurs between about 220,000 feet and 150,000 feet. And that time period is only going to be about 45 seconds. So with that short time period, we will make sure that our instruments can track the capsule as it enters. Hayabusa's return at seven and a half miles per second is, is rare. There's not something like this is gonna happen for uh, several years at minimum. And being able to have this airborne observation campaign gives NASA a front row seat, if you wanna put it that way, to observe this re-entry and collect data that can be used for analysis for future entry systems. This particular object, the Hayabusa spacecraft, comes in with the speed of a natural asteroid impact. And so here we can uh, know when it comes, uh, where it comes, we can point instruments at it, and we can follow how it enters the Earth's atmosphere, how it breaks into pieces, how the capsule that protects the sample is, uh, is, is protected by the heat shield material. Okay, let's save that one.
Why did you want to be a cosmonaut? Anybody in my yard, small yard in small town, hear about Yuri Gagarin, about German Titov, it's the first Russian cosmonauts. We hear and our hero was a name.